What's up, everybody? I'm blessed and free. Welcome back to another episode of DOC TV. So, man, I've been getting a lot of new subscribers, a lot of new people checking out the videos, and I never really have told, you know, what led me down the road to prison, jail, and all the fucked up shit that happened in my life. And before I get started, though, I just want to thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel. If you haven't, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. And I'm going to be dropping more personal stories. And before I drop this story, though, I don't want anybody watching to think that I'm making excuses for the, you know, ending up in prison or jail because I'm not. But the reason I wanted to do this is because I've been interviewing a lot of people. I've been talking. I've been hearing a lot of different stories. And there's one thing that all of us have in common, and that was our childhood. And that is the same shit that happened with me. And I'm going to get into that story right now. So when I was a kid, man, oh, I grew up in Tampa. Uh, my mom and my dad never married. So when I was about two years old, my mom and dad split up. And then I went to live with my mom. Now, I lived with my mom probably for like a year or some shit like that. My grandparents, which was my dad's parents, ended up hiring a private investigator because my mom was just doing whatever she wanted. She wasn't being a mom. I don't remember a lot about what went on then. I do know though, when I was like five years old, I was at my mom's. Her sister was supposed to be watching me, but she, I think was stripping at that time. So she was sleeping during the day and I ended up getting out of the apartment and going on Hillsborough Avenue, which some people might not even know what that is or where it is. It's in Tampa and it's one of the biggest highways that, that are in the city of Tampa. So I leave the apartment, I get on my tricycle and I'm literally pedaling down Hillsborough Avenue and I end up at a gas station like a half a mile away from our apartment and the cops pull up, they find me, I end up telling them like where I live, they went back, they, they gave me back to my aunt and my grandparents, which was my dad's parents had found out about this and so they weren't fucking happy. And my dad was so busy, he owned his own business, he was working, so he didn't really have the luxury at that time to be able to take me and me live with him. So my grandparents ended up hiring a, a private investigator. The dude started following my mom around and I was you know, at fucking crack houses, I was at parties till like 3 a.m. And eventually they talked my mom into letting them raise me. So I go to live with my grandparents now my mom had come back in the picture like a couple, like three years later. And she was like, I'm ready to be a mom. I want him to come live with me. She had met this new guy and she was getting married. So my grandparents always wanted my mom to be in my life. So they were like, all right, well, let's see, let's see if you can be a parent. So I went to live with my mom and you know, it was all right for like the first year or two. Um, we ended up moving into a new place and they, you know, she started drinking again. She was a big alcoholic, um, and when she drank, she drank, you know what I'm saying? Like go big or go home type shit. And she was always going big. So when I was seven years old, my grandfather had came to my mom's house one morning and he said, Hey, I'm here to pick you up. We drove back to their house. And that's when I had found out that my dad had died in a car accident, um, at like three o'clock in the morning. And what's crazy is before that happened that night, before he came to pick me up, I had a dream that my dad died in a car accident. It was crazy. And I had told my grandparents that I had that dream. So after like the funeral and all that shit happened, they took me to like some psychiatrist, like, I don't know, I guess they thought I was like a medium or something, but I don't know. I just feel like when somebody close to you, like your kid or your parent, like something bad happens, you just feel that shit in your gut. And I think that that's what it was for me. And, you know, I didn't even realize at that point in my life that like, I'm never going to see my dad again. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, oh, he'll be back. That's, that's what went on in my head. And I'm kind of getting emotional talking about this, but so I end up moving back with my grandparents and, you know, my mom was still partying heavy. So she wasn't in my life and she would literally disappear out of my life for, like five years at a time. Like I was, you know, went from seven to 12 and boom, now she comes back in my life. And I would now would go back over to her house because my grandma always wanted my mom to be a mom and be in my life because she didn't want me to grow up without having the only parent that I had in my life. So 
she let me go back and live with her and she had a new boyfriend this time. And when I, right when I went back, he had to do like four years or it was like two or three years in prison. So he goes to prison. I'm living with my mom and she's fucking every dude, a different dude every weekend. Shit's still the same. She's partying. Like my first day of school in, I want to say like the fourth grade, a week before my first day of school, she just disappeared. So I'm at this house by myself. I don't have any new school clothes. I don't have anybody telling me what to do. So I just don't go to school because I honestly, when I was living with her, like I felt like a scrub, like she, you know, she lived in a double wide trailer. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but she didn't buy me shit. So I started just stealing shit. Like when we would go to stores, I would steal shit. We go to the corner store. I'm stealing candy, you know, thinking I'm cool with all my, all my little friends and shit. And so the dude gets out of prison. He finds out that she's been fucking every Tom, Dick, and Harry around town. And he starts beating the shit out of her. And there's nothing I can do because I'm fucking like 12 years old. And this dude just got out of prison. He's a big ass cracker. So he would fuck me up if I tried anything. He had beat her so bad one night and she was pregnant that when he punched her, like all her teeth were loose in her mouth. So they were fighting because he wanted her to get an abortion. So it's like three o'clock in the morning. They got me in the car. We're going to an emergency room and she's getting an abortion with two black eyes, her teeth fucking crooked. I don't even know how that no doctor saw her and called the cops, but they did it. And you know, she would be getting her ass beat some nights and, and I would have to be the one to call the cops because we would be out in the middle of fucking nowhere and this dude's like literally almost killing my mom. So y'all can say what you want about calling the cops, but I was 12 years old and if your mom was getting beat and you she was getting beat by some big ass dude, you know, it doesn't leave you any options but to do that. And the cops would come, he would run, disappear for a week she would fucking, he would be back in a week and the same shit would go on. And that's really where like my life became chaotic. And I almost got an adrenaline rush off the chaos. And I think that's where like my life took, like went down a dark road because it, I brought that shit with me everywhere I went. So when I went back to live with my grandparents, you know, I would go to school and it was almost like a normal life wasn't normal. Like my normal was, you know, watching the cops show up, watching someone get arrested, watching her fucking walk around stumbling over herself drunk. And that's what happened, man. I got addicted to the chaos and that's where I got my first charge is when I was 12 years old. And I have an episode on that. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. My first charge was an armed burglary and a grand larceny. And it's a fucked up story, but this shit can happen to anyone. You know, a lot of people in this life right now are growing up in that exact same situation. And I think that's why people watch me on YouTube and can relate to me is because my life is relatable to either that or they're normal and they just want to look at me and say, man, that dude's fucked up. And that's all right too. Just like the video, drop the comments and subscribe to the channel, man. But anyways, I'm going to keep going with this story. Um, after what happened after I got arrested, make sure you have post notifications turned on all. So every time I drop an episode, you can hear it first. And with that, it's DOC TV and I'm out. <laughs>